Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada where our rainy season has started. We had lots of rain over the last few hours. Welcome Nipa, hi Fuang, hi David. Nice to see so many students joining in on the class. Everybody, this is an IELTS speaking class. It's part one, kind of a fun topic for today, talking about your birthday. Definitely a topic that could come up on your IELTS exam. Birthdays are celebrated around the world. These are common topics. People talk about them in everyday conversation. So these are the kinds of topics that the IELTS exam creators love to use for IELTS speaking part one because they feel that any person who speaks even a lower level of English should be able to talk a bit about their birthday. Now we'll do that, we'll practice with some speaking part one questions. I will give you strategies, tips. We will learn from each other. We will talk with our students and we will enjoy this English class for the IELTS speaking part one. Uh, the lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites. They power these live classes. They have all of our materials, our interactive courses, videos, practice exams that we use regularly. So if you're enjoying these live classes, definitely go to the websites. This is aehelp.com here. Click the big red button, join the premium package. It's a one-time payment and you have all of our materials to succeed on your next test. We're an IDP affiliate, we're a British Council partner, we're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent and we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. We are the first for many of the tips and innovations you see online. For general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. It's the green background. Again, just click that big red button and you are good to go. When you click that button, you can use this discount code NOVEL9 for an additional 10% kickback on the original price. The price is different in different countries, so check it out in your country. That code is coming from the most recent video which we released on YouTube and that's also for speaking and that's a really good video. Um, you should check that out. It's got a really neat feature for the vocabulary learning uh, where you have these flying pieces of vocabulary. Uh, if anybody saw that, share that in the chat. Let me know what you think about that flying vocabulary. Uh, it's a new innovation. Again, we're the first ones. We created this. It's new technology. Uh, so if you like that flying vocabulary in the subtitles, let us know. Send us an email. If you have questions, uh, send us an email. I would love to hear your opinion about that new type of subtitle that we're using in the speaking video where you have these high band or high level vocabulary that kind of fly into the uh, subtitles. So check out the video. Let me know what you think about that technology. We would love to hear your feedback. My email is adrian at aehelp.com, A-D-R-I-A-N at aehelp.com, or admin at aehelp.com. Either one of those uh, will get you answers. And again, I'd love to hear your opinion on that new video. Uh, okay, students, uh, Instagram, yes, of course, IELTS underscore AE help. We're well over 100,000 followers there now. G IELTS help, another great place. And uh, we just posted a new blog for you. Um, if you're brand new to the IELTS exam and you're brand new uh, to the speaking section, a really great place to start um, is uh, by checking out our blogs. Um, we have our blogs here on the website and you can search for it. Uh, it's this one here that um, we just posted. Uh, what is IELTS? And it talks about that, okay? 
so check that out. IELTS is not an ESL test. It's that's the first misconception or wrong idea that many uh, people have. They think IELTS is an ESL exam. It's an English as a second language exam. It's not. Uh, native speakers also take the IELTS exam for their English proficiency score to get into school or for immigration. The only reason some or many native speakers don't do it is because they have grade 12 English marks from their schools. If you have that, then you don't need to do IELTS either. So only do IELTS if you have to. IELTS is the International English Language Testing System. A band seven in the speaking means that you are a good user of the English language. A band nine means you're an expert. It doesn't mean you're a native speaker. Uh, many native speakers would not get a band nine on the speaking section. So keep that in mind. Okay. I will explain to you what that takes. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, students, um, we've got lots of live classes uh, for you today. Um, or sorry, this week, I should say. Today we've got this one. Today we've got speaking part one for everyone. Uh, tomorrow we'll do a task one for graphs for members. And then we'll do listening parts three and four for subscribers tomorrow. That's finishing that listening exam that we started last week. And then we'll have speaking part two and speaking part three on Saturday. Uh, we do post this schedule on our YouTube community board. Uh, so subscribe to our channel, check out the, the community posts and you'll see lots of good information including the schedule. And we also put it up on Instagram that I was just showing you there, IELTS underscore AE help and GILTS help so you can check out the schedule, mark it in your calendar and follow uh, these live classes. Uh, Eunice, the course is really robust and it has a lot of content, so I recommend checking it out. I could take the whole class just showing you the course and I don't, that's not our goal here. All right, um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at IELTS Speaking Part 1. Now, Speaking Part 1, it's the first part you have to have a good strong start, okay? Um, otherwise, you will get yourself into an uphill battle to get a good mark. So you need to be confident right away. You need to be fluent right away. You need to give good answers right away. So make sure that you speak and repeat during this class. You go to your IELTS exam. You go an hour early. You talk with other candidates. You use English only. You believe in yourself because you're beautiful people and you deserve to believe in yourself. Okay? Absolutely. And I'm not just saying that and I'm not just being melodramatic. You do. You should. Confidence is in you. Okay? Go and speak to other people. That's the magic of um, young children. That's why young children learn so quickly because they're not shy. They're just full of confidence most of the time. Um, so you need to be confident, confident like the mind of a two, three year old, okay? So go there early and then register, make sure you have your ID with you, uh, check out the place, know where the washroom is, go and check in, and then eventually the examiner uh, will call you into the room or they will send you to your exam room and there will be a guy or a girl 30 years old, 60 years old, doesn't matter what they look like, how old they are, uh, they're just there to do their job. Measure your English communication. Okay, that word is very important, communication. Your English communication. English is the vocabulary and the grammar part. Communication is the accuracy, fluency, coherence part. Those two together are going to give you your final score. All right, so uh, good news. You showed up to your exam. You're definitely going to get at least a band one, <laughs> okay? Um, the only way to get band zero is if you don't show up to your exam. So you're getting a band one. The examiner says, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. 
I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. We are conducting this exam in Victoria. The time right now is 9 a.m. Let's begin. May I see your identification, please? If you say, yes, here you go, you got a band one, okay? <laughs> you can't leave with less than a band one. All right, but we want to do better. Of course, band one does not get us too far in life. We want to do better, so we're going to be fluent. May I see your identification, please? Yes, gladly. Here is my passport that I had used to register for the test and at check-in uh, just now. Please take a look. Now you're on your way to a band nine. Now the examiner's thinking, wow, this person prepared. They know that they need to be fluent. They know that this is a proficiency exam. So you have to be proficient. It means fluent, professional, proficient. Okay, fluent, accurate, professional. Good, all right. Cobra Gaming, love the name. Cobra Gaming says, yes, gladly. Here is my passport that I had used for registration. Uh, please take a look. Okay, Cobra, it's not register, not for register, for registration. You need the noun form there. All right. Um, David says, gladly, here's my passport, which I had registered with for the test not long ago. Please take a look at my credentials. David, you just have the word with missing. Nipa says, yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I've used to register for the test. Please have a look at my credentials. Uh, students, a uh, really important tip here, okay, beyond the fluency part, don't make mistakes with these first few questions even small ones, it just sounds really bad. Be very prepared, okay? So important. All right, then comes the next question, what is your full name? Okay, and then you give your full name my full name is Jameson Andrew. Andrew being my given name and uh, Jameson uh, is my surname. Please just call me Andrew. Okay. Lots of ways, again, to say your name, to introduce yourself. You need to be fluent. Make sure to tell the examiner what they should call you because otherwise their next question is, and what should I call you? If they have to ask you that question, it's really awkward because it feels like you just jumped into the IELTS test without any preparation. Most, hopefully all candidates that sit the IELTS exam know that the examiner asks you, what should I call you as the follow-up question to what is your full name? So this question is an interesting one because it kind of shows the examiner that you prepared or that you didn't prepare. You're confident or you're really nervous and you're forgetting to tell the examiner what to call you, okay? So it's super important that you tell them when you give your name what you should be called. Everybody good on that? Some thumbs up in the chat maybe to show that you understand that. It's really important. So what is your full name? My full name is Jameson Andrew. Andrew being my given name and Jameson is my surname. Please just call me Andrew. Okay, Andrew, in the brain of the examiner, thank you for preparing and knowing that I'm going to ask you that and kind of jumping that question so we can just get right into it and I can really assess your English and give you a great mark. Super, they're not gonna say that, but it's in their head, okay? All right, Nipa Fuang, Cobra, uh, Charuta, they're all thumbs up there for us. Great, that's excellent, okay? All right. Ma says, I sat the IELTS exam twice in my life, but I, but 
never were I asked this question. Um, which question mall? What should I call you? You were never asked. They should. Whoever was your examiner or or your exam center missed that in their training if they didn't ask you because it's in the training manual for the examiners. Always ask the candidate what they like to be called. It's actually very, a very important question for the examiners. So I'm not sure where you're taking your exams, Maul, but uh, somebody might want to have a little bit of a chat with the uh, trainers there. All right, very important question because people can easily get offended if they're called by the wrong name these days, especially. It's a sensitive topic. So, anyway. Uh, Jayami says, what if I have more than one given name? Uh, Jayami, then you can say um, my given names are uh, Jayami Pallavi and my family name is Papidiani. Uh, please call me by my middle name, Pallavi, right? So uh, you can tell them. Uh, make sure you say the same name that is in your passport. That's specifically what they're looking at. If you have names that are not in your passport, I don't recommend saying it because it's confusing to the examiner and the examiner kind of has to check that you are you. So if you're giving them other information that's not in your passport, they might kind of give you a strange look. They probably won't kick you out, but they'll kind of be like, hmm, why doesn't your, why doesn't your uh, name in your passport match with what you're telling me, right? So be careful about that, okay? All right, uh, next question. Uh, do you work or study? Okay, again, give a nice full sentence answer for this one. Now, these days, a lot of people are working and studying at the same time. So you can say, I am both employed and I'm a student. So notice the paraphrasing, right? We've got work. And in my answer, I use the word employed. Employed means I have a job, right? That's another way you could say it. I have a job. I both have a job and I'm learning, okay? And I'm a student. Uh, really quick paraphrasing reminds you that in great communication, we're clearly paraphrasing the other person. It shows that we're paying attention. It shows that we understand what they're talking about and it gives clear direction to our information. So paraphrasing is super duper important, okay? Again, for those of you who have access to our premium IELTS course, I strongly, strongly recommend uh, going to your My Student Account full online course, key strategies in your key strategies. Uh, definitely check out the information about paraphrasing. Okay, it'll be in here, paraphrasing, there you go. So check that out, okay. Know what it is for your test, all right. All of those tips and strategies are in there and videos to support that, okay. That's what I meant when I said in these classes, we learn a lot of that content, okay. All right. So, uh, do you work or study? I am both employed and I'm a student. Always explain what you're saying, okay? I uh, work as an intern at a law firm and I'm studying uh, jurisprudence at the University of Victoria. Okay, so explain yourself. Do you work or study? I'm both employed and I'm a student. I work as an intern at a law firm and I'm studying jurisprudence at the University of Victoria. Uh, in fact, uh, just after this exam, I have to go to the uh, office for a uh, few hours 
to finish uh, some emails. Yeah, okay. Um, that's kind of your supporting fact or your explanation, or sorry, your example of what you just said, the real world. Remember the real world, it's very, very important, okay? All right, uh, Aditya says this. Aditya says, currently I am working full time as a software uh, developer for a well-known global clothing brand, Levi's. I handle their software backend system. By the way, notice the pronunciation on this. I find it strange that all around the world people pronounce it differently, but it's Levi's, Levi's. <laughs> a lot of people say Levis or Levis, but no, <laughs> the pronunciation is Levi's. Okay, Aditya, good. All right. Utker, good to see you here, Utker. Utker says, I am currently studying at Westminster in International University in Tashkent and majoring in economics with a specialization in finance. Also, I have been doing some teaching for the better part of four years to make ends meet. Okay, uh, to make ends meet, is a nice idiom, uh, Utker, to throw in here. It's accurately used. Never just use idioms, always use them accurately. Uh, here, Utker, to make ends meet, it means that you're, I'm guessing you're doing this work so that you can pay for your apartment, your food, your clothing, uh, and then it's really good, okay? All right, Fwad says, I have just finished my undergraduate and currently I'm preparing for IELTS. Matter of fact, I am taking classes with Adrian right now. <laughs> okay, very good, Fouad. Uh, Fouad, do mention what your undergraduate is in. So if it's an undergraduate in computer science, say that, say computer science. Details, 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 students. Details are important, okay? So details uh, equal high band scores. Why? Why do you think? Why do you think it's important? Like, why do you think if you say that I just finished my undergraduate, it's good to say I finished my undergraduate in chemical engineering instead of just saying I finished my undergraduate? What do you think? Why is that important? Well, if you're not sure, let me tell you why. It increases your fluency. It increases your lexical resource, which means your vocabulary mark. It increases your accuracy and um, very importantly it increases your originality okay it makes you sound like you not just candidate nine seven five two three eight one one five okay like any other guy or girl taking the exam so it makes you sound original super important okay all right um, next question what do you do at the weekends? Details. On Saturdays, I like to be active as possible. I go for a swim or a hike. And on Sundays, I like to take it easy. Uh, either curl up with a good book or uh, watch a bit of Netflix. This last uh, Saturday, I uh, watched a new uh, cooking uh, show called Is It Cake 2? <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so what do you do at the weekends? Break it down, right? Weekends are maybe for you it's Friday and Saturday. Uh, for me, it's usually Saturday, Sunday. Actually, for me, it's usually Monday, Tuesday. But um, anyway, break it down. So what do you do at the weekends? On Saturdays, I like to be active as possible. I go for a swim or a hike. And on Sundays, I like to take it easy, either curl up with a good book or watch a bit of Netflix. This last Saturday, 
I watched a new cooking show called Is It Cake 2? Okay. All right. Munavar says, on Saturday, I exercise, but the day after today, which is Sunday, I will wake up late and then go play football in the morning. All right. Munavar, it's good. Nice mix of some different tenses. Uh, present and future participle will. Uh, AJ says, on the weekends, I usually hang out with my friends in a coffee shop to have a good laugh or have some discussion about different investment ideas for an hour or two. Okay. Uh, Rana says, I carry out various activities. First of all, on Saturday, I go to a local restaurant with my kith and kin and explore local foods. Um, on Sundays, I devote a lion's share of my time to family members. Rana, it's an okay answer. It sounds like you're really forcing those idioms. Natural English probably wouldn't use lion's share in that situation or kith and kin in that situation. So careful about that, okay? All right. Let's get into today's specific topic. Let's talk about your birthday. I, I really wanted to get to this part of the lesson because it's I, if birthdays are fun. I don't know about you, but I'm like, whoop, whoop. I like birthdays. Celebrating the day that we came first to visit Earth and say, hello, Earth. Here I am, brand new and fresh, ready for all the fun you have to offer. Um, so <laughs> some people hate their birthdays, some people are indifferent, and some people like me just love birthdays. I love birthdays. Um, all right, so let's jump into it. Um, first question, can you tell me when your birthday is? Yes, I was born on the... 14th of July in 1980. It's an easy date for many to remember as it is uh, Bastille Day, a national holiday in France, which basically uh, celebrates the rise of modern day capitalism. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, not capitalism, democracy. Okay, <coughs> Bastille, like that. All right. Now you know how old I am. Some of you are probably doing the math. How old is this guy? Oh, he's that old. All right. Like I say, I've been teaching IELTS for almost 20 years. All right, uh, so here we go. Can you tell me when your birthday is? Yes, I was born on the 14th of July in 1980. Now I know that, you know, especially for some ladies, they're kind of shy to give their year. It's the IELTS. Just tell them how old you are. <laughs> okay, don't be shy. They're not going to be like, hmm, you look younger. They, they will never say, so this is where IELTS is different from natural or real world situations, right? In the real world, people would generally say, oh, you look really great for your age or whatever, right? And in the IELTS, they won't do that, okay? They just have questions, question, question, question. Um, so they're not there to judge you. They're not there to be your friend. They are looking for good, fluent, accurate, answers okay all right so can you tell me when your birthday is yes i was born on the 14th of july in 1980 it's an easy date for many to remember as it is bastille day a national holiday in france which basically celebrates the rise of modern day democracy wow okay so you it's good to know some interesting fact about your birthday if you haven't looked at your day and why your day might be unique or special Check it out, right? <laughs> All right. Um, Fouad, one of our more recent members, has this for us. Sure. I was born on the 26th of 
October 2000, Millennium Baby. I remember my mom telling me that it was real cold at the time I was born. Usually that is the case in India during October to January as it is the winter season. Okay, sure. Yeah, little bit of an extra piece of information here, Fouad, but I think it's acceptable given that, you know, we're asking you when your birthday is. All right. Akarad, Akarid, Riches, has this answer for us. Yes, I was born the 6th of January in 1997. Usually, I don't see my birthday to be fun because everyone in my home, especially my parents, uh, feel that we have celebrated it with the new year. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's one of the tricky parts of being born on a holiday, right? All right, there are your corrections. You've got some missing words there and some unnecessary words. So the year is unnecessary. The word it is necessary, Akarid. So careful with that, okay? Yeah, um, Muslim Aksan says, so Muslim Aksan says, I was born on the 10th of September 2007. It's tricky. You have to learn how to say dates, right, in English. Um, right away with this question, the examiner can kind of tell if you're band six, seven, eight, nine. The reason why is because a band eight or a band nine candidate will not make mistakes with saying dates, like knowing what prepositions to use in, at, on, or the. So a band eight or a band nine candidate will know very well how to give information about dates and not have mistakes. So it's a tricky one. Uh, Muslim Aksan, I was born on the 10th of September uh, 2007. My uh, 16th, right? Yes. My sweet 16. Uh, birthday, Sweet 16 is a special birthday in uh, many uh, Western cultures. Um, it's the age that you can drive a car, for example. So I was born on the 10th of September 2007. My Sweet 16 is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Muslim Aksan, happy Sweet 16th uh, ahead of time. Okay. And it sounds like you're going to be celebrating that very, very soon. Okay, uh, that's a bit of extra information. Again, knowing that kind of English and giving that kind of English will help you to increase your band score. So always think, think about what you're saying, okay? All right, um, next question. How do you usually celebrate your birthday? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. How do you usually celebrate your birthday? Okay, I'm going to give you an answer and then you can kind of think about your own. So most of the time, because of usually, right? Most of the time, I celebrate my B-Day with my friends and family at either my home or at a restaurant. We get together for some food, conversation, and of course, cake and presents. Last year, I went to a grill restaurant and we all had steak. Okay, 
Sure, I kind of just made that last part up, but why not to give myself a bit more fluency, right? So how do you usually celebrate your birthday? Here the keyword of course is usually. So you need to really identify those keywords in the examiner's questions and then reflect them, okay? So this is an important tip here. Reflect the keywords. Also, you could think about it as the controlling ideas. of the questions in this case the word usually okay so here uh, most of the time right away that tells the examiner okay he got that word usually most of the time I celebrate my B day with my friends and family at either home or at a restaurant we get together for some food conversation and of course cake and presents last year I went to a grill restaurant and we all had steak. Okay, fluency, two to three sentences, details, original. Okay, all right, uh, Pluto says, I always celebrate my B-Day with my friends. We spend our time together, like uh, watch a movie. Um, go to a restaurant. Not went to a restaurant, because went would be verb mismatch, right? So if your verbs are present tense, they all have to be present tense. So watch, go, eat, right? So watch a movie, go to a restaurant, and of course, not curse, careful, and of course, eat cake. Uh, last year, I ate a New York uh, cheesecake for my birthday um, and it was delicious okay little bit more little bit more for that fluency mark okay all right cowboy cowboy says mostly I celebrate my birthday with my familiar people that's strange English Okay, we don't call them familiar people. <laughs> it almost sounds like you're in a video game. My familiars, these are my minions that follow me. They are my familiars. Um, no, this is not an animation movie. This is not, um, uh, this is not a, uh, a video game. So not familiar people. Uh, mostly I celebrate my birthday with my close uh, relatives. or my friends. At a restaurant. Last year I celebrated with my family um, at a uh, Chinese uh, all you can eat uh, buffet. Okay. I had so much food, they had to roll me out of the restaurant. All right, now it's a band nine, okay, cowboy? So careful, use natural English. If the English that you're saying is not natural, it usually gets a very low band score, why? Because it's really difficult to understand. Um, so familiar people has a different meaning and it's very awkward in this context. You have to be really careful. Okay. Mostly I celebrate with, uh, mostly I celebrate my birthday with my close relatives, um, or my friends at a restaurant. Last year I celebrated it with my family at a Chinese all you can eat buffet. I had so much food they had to roll me out of the restaurant. Okay. Um, what did you do on your last birthday? Okay, then you can connect, okay? 
So here I said last year I went to a grill restaurant and we had steak. Um, as I mentioned, we went uh, to a, a grill restaurant. There were about 12 of us. Uh, we enjoyed uh, sitting next to a large fireplace eating triple A uh, steak and uh, talking about all the fun adventures we had in the year. This was commemorated with a large um, tiramisu cake. Tiramisu with an eye. What did you do on your last birthday? As I mentioned, we went to a grill restaurant. There were about 12 of us. We enjoyed sitting next to a large fireplace, eating AAA steak, talking about all the fun adventures we had in the year. This was commemorated with a large tiramisu cake. Okay, great. So more detail. If the examiner asks you a question and you feel like you already answered the question, to get a high band score, you want to stay on topic and give a bit more information on that answer. Okay, make that connection. Then, at this point, your examiner goes, oh, great. This is just in their head. They're not allowed to tell you great. Great, this sounds like a conversation definitely in the band eight to nine range. Okay. So uh, if the examiner feels that they're having a good conversation with you, that's accurate, that's on topic, then you're going to get a really high band score. That's one of their key criteria for those higher band scores is does it sound like a good conversation? Okay, if it sounds like a good conversation, then you're on your way to a great score. All right. Aditya is doing just that. So Aditya says, as I said earlier, for my last birthday, I went to a temple in the morning. After that, we had a nice brunch at an Italian uh, restaurant. And in the evening, we went to an Indian restaurant. Oh, doubling up on the restaurants, nice. Okay. Zukshnidin has this answer. It says, I spent most of the day with my next of kins. We went to a Japanese restaurant. I had sushi for the first time on that day. Uh, and later in the evening, not but later in the evening, and... Later in the evening, I enjoyed watching a film. Okay. Zeus uh, Nidin, but is a contrast. It means opposite to, right? So you got to be careful with that. It's not a contrast here, it's an addition. It's like I did this and this and this in addition. Furthermore, moreover, you're adding information, not contrasting information. Okay. Careful with that. All right, uh, next, here we go. Do you have any special birthday traditions in your family? Yes, I do. In my family, we always have cake with candles and the um, a uh, birthday uh, boy or girl has to blow out the candles and make a wish. Of course, this is also accompanied by a birthday song. Happy birthday. 
day to you. Happy birthday to you. And so on. <laughs> Don't say and so on. <laughs> Okay, never say and so on. It doesn't make any sense, right? So just, uh, and you don't have to sing. <laughs> you can just stop with, and a birthday song. <laughs> okay. Deepa's like, ha ha. You could. Chayani, if, if you've got a little English piece of music that you feel is fitting for the situation, absolutely. I'm sure your examiner will smile and appreciate it. It's part of the tradition, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, do you have any special birthday traditions in your family? Yes, I do. In my family, we always have cake with candles, and the birthday boy or girl has to blow out the candles and make a wish. Of course, this is always accompanied by a birthday song. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Fuad has this answer for us. Fuad says, not specifically, my family does not really celebrate birthdays. However, as I mentioned earlier, we go out to some place, some nice place, um, either for food or to a place. Doesn't make sense there. Either for food or to play or to have fun. Uh, last time it was a barbecue place. All right, Fouad, negative answers are usually bad answers. It's a good example of it. There are multiple mistakes. It's awkward. It's confusing. Do you have traditions? You don't have traditions. It sounds like you do have a tradition. It sounds like you do go out on your birthdays, which is also a tradition of sorts, right? So positive answers, everybody, positive answers. It doesn't mean you have to have a big, lavish birthday party with balloons and uh, circus animals, okay, uh, magicians and so on. Uh, it can be a simple birthday tradition. It's still a birthday tradition. In the IELTS exam, everybody, think positive, okay? Think positive. Uh, positive answers usually lead to better band scores. There is more content and less likely to include mistakes, okay? easier to explain. Fatima says circus animals. I always wanted a birthday with a couple of monkeys running around. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, right? All right. Um, let's jump a question. Here we go. Let's jump to this one. Is there a specific age in your culture that is considered especially significant or celebrated in a grand way? Okay. A yes. There are a couple. One is 16. Um, it is called Sweet 16 uh, because it is uh, the age when many uh, people start to become mature and uh, in much of North America, uh, they can get their driver's license. Of course, 18 is a big age because this is the legal age of maturity when um, people can vote. Another significant milestone is 60 because it is nearing the age of retirement and is considered the age of wisdom all right doesn't have to be the truth completely okay you can kind of make it up but it should be believable all right so um this is for the question, is there a specific age in your culture that is considered especially significant or celebrated in a grand way? Yes, there are a couple. 
Um, one is 16. It is called Sweet 16 because it is the age when many people start to become mature and in much of North America, they can get their driver's license. Of course, 18 is a big age because this is the legal age of maturity when people can vote. Another significant milestone is 60 because it is nearing the age of retirement and is considered the age of wisdom. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm going to put this one up because it's a good one. Vadim. Uh, Vadim says, The most incredible birthday of mine was my 17th. It was my first get a kiss from a girl ever. I felt really excited. All right, Vadim. Thank you for sharing that. That was really cool. Fatima says, In our country, we will be able to get our driver's license, open up a bank account, vote when someone turns 18. So we would say to them, happy becoming legal age. Fun. Uh, Fatima, what's your country? Okay. Uh, be specific. Here especially, we have no idea. What country is that? Okay. Uh, the examiner does not know what you know. That's a very important tip, everybody. Okay. Uh, this is, again, an important tip here. The examiner does not know what you know. Be specific. Okay. All right. So, Fatima, what country is that? Okay, students, talking about birthdays, being specific, lots of good tips, being fluent, right? Let's um, volunteer for some live speaking. Let me show you what you need to do. So to volunteer for speaking, uh, follow these instructions. We're going to do this together, everybody. Uh, go first to the website, aehelp.com. <clears throat> okay. Uh, once you're at the website, you can create an account if you don't have one for free. This does not cost money. So if you're thinking, oh, this is where I have to pay. No, 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 no. You can do this for free. Okay. If you pay, great. You're doing yourself a favor, but you can do it for free. Go to your My Student account. Uh, click on the Student Partner Speaking. Uh, Enable your microphone in your browser. Test it out. Try to chat with someone. So send someone a message and say, hey, can we chat for like just two questions? What's your name? Can I see your passport? Just to see if uh, it, it's working for me. If not, maybe I need to use a VPN or something like that. Okay. And then we will be able to talk to each other. So again, go to aehelp.com. You can sign up for a premium IELTS course by clicking the big red button again it's a one-time payment for lifetime access it's totally worth it uh, many people keep using our courses way after IELTS to continue learning English and communication you go to your my student account in your my student account you'll see your computer-based practice exams your interactive course that I was showing you earlier in the class you've got your exam books workbooks you can download and print them You've got hundreds of videos to watch for every part of the test. You've got your audio CDs uh, to listen and learn the British accent. And then um, you can go to uh, student partner speaking. Okay. Now in the student partner speaking, you just clicked I accept start speaking okay uh, use a headset if possible and then you will see lots and lots of people in here um, we have Sai Sri who's a premium student we have Nova who's a premium student Kave uh, and lots lots more so the way that you can connect with me is with the blue envelope that's beside my handle my handle is uh, master like that okay uh, send me a salutation so say hi I want to try I want to volunteer here we can see Kave has uh, sent me um, a message Kave says can I try 
Uh, sure. Are you ready? And I think Kaveh is ahead of me because Kaveh says yes. Um, so Kaveh says yes. Okay, let's reach out to Kaveh. My hi, Kabe. Uh, How are you? I'm I'm fine. Good. Uh, nice to see you back. You. I think this is your second time <laughs> volunteering, right? Yes, this is yeah. It's my second ch chance. Great. Talking with you, <laughs> it's really great. Okay. Kabe, can you remind me where you are? Uh, I'm from. Uh, I'm. I live. I'm living in Iran, in Tehran, and I want to pursue my study. So. <laughs> I have to get my uh, actually certificate on IELTS exams. Really needy for uh, going abroad. It's yes. it's a re it's really a necessary, not needy. It's necessary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Needy yeah. has needy needy has a different meaning. It's a strange one, but uh -huh. if somebody is need, it's a it's an it's a person oh, adjective yes. to mm, say needy. Yes. Like he's a need. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like he's a needy person. It's like I need this. I need that. You need that. It's a needy so, person. Yeah. It's really essential. For exactly. For yeah. <laughs> All right, coming. Uh, let's jump in. Are you ready? Please. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. May I see your identification, please? Yes, of course. Here's my passport that I have registered for my IELTS exam. Please have a look. What is your full name? My name is Kav. My given name, yes. My given name is Kav and my surname is Vatan Khop. Please call me Kave. All right, Kave. I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? I'm currently both studying and working. Uh, actually, I'm preparing my, myself for the IELTS exam. It's a really big one. While also employed as a network specialist at Soho Small Home Office ID Solution Company. Let's talk about birthdays. Uh, can okay. you tell me when your birthday is? Yeah, my birthday uh, uh, falls on August 15th, 1993. I'm a Leo. <laughs> How do you usually celebrate your birthday? Uh, could you rephrase your question? Yes. How do you usually celebrate your birthday? Uh -huh. uh, typically, I uh, celebrate my birthday by having a small uh, get together with my family and my with my uh, intimate friend. We usually have a nice supper at home and my uh, mom last year my mom bakes <clears throat> bakes a uh, 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 scrumptious cake and it's really great uh, moment uh, and uh, but, but it's always filled with love and warmth okay I'm gonna stop there okay and give you some feedback um, good, nice. Uh, well, you've got some great English, Kaveh. That's first of all. That's uh, that's good. Um, so the band score so far for your responses would be about a band seven to seven five, seven to mm -hmm. seven five, probably a seven five. I would say closer to a seven five. Uh, so somewhere mm -hmm. between the good to very good English. Now um, uh, let's focus on the good. First, uh, first of all, really great vocabulary. Okay, um, so uh, you used, uh, for instance, you said um, um, either or. So you used the correlative conjunction in the beginning mm. there. Um, you or I said you said sorry, both and you, you you're both working and you're studying. Both currently yeah. worth Vegas. Yeah. yeah, I caught that. So anyway, I. I couldn't remember the exact correlative conjunction, but I did catch the mm -hmm. correlative conjunction. So the examiner is always catching those pieces, and uh, and that was really good. And you were very <laughs> confident sorry. in um, your sentences. So uh, so that was really good. Um, secondly, you were almost kind of acting a little bit, like you're like, sure, gladly. Here's my passport that I used to register. Please have a look. That's really clever. Okay, so everybody pay attention to what Kavi was doing here. Kavi was like. Kind of like almost as if he's in theater, like acting in English and presenting himself in a very kind of, you know, and that is good. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. You don't want to sound bored 
or like mm-hmm. you were tired mm-hmm. or you just woke up and you're like, hi, my name is Kave. Please call me Kave. <laughs> Being <Okay>. melodramatic. <laughs> you have to be melodramatic. Yeah, it has to sound. I mean, think about it this way, everybody. Um, this IELTS examiner is sitting through these interviews every day for like five, six hours listening to like 15 candidates each day. Just imagine how boring their job can get when everybody kind of sounds like this and is talking like this to them, right? So, and, and they're asking a lot of the same questions and getting a lot of the same answers. So when somebody sounds a little bubbly, a little bit more alive, they're going to get better scores, okay? Our intonation, our voice carries strength. So it does matter. They might not directly mark you on that. They're not going to be like, oh, wow, mark for acting, nine. No, they don't have an acting mark, mm-hmm. but they do have a coherence mark, how well they understand you. And when you intonate, when you go up and down and you emphasize, you're going to be understood better, okay? So yes. this is where yes. intonation, body language is important. There's some really bad videos online that are telling people you don't you don't need to worry about these parts not true okay good communication has those parts in it for sure all right so that was really good yes. yeah. um so Kavi, good uh, good vocabulary great mm-hmm. in, great intonation the other really good part was self-correction okay um i think a lot of viewers right now are probably thinking yeah but he made so many mistakes and then he corrected himself that's exactly what you mm. want to do, okay? Self-correction mm. is a natural part of language. We make mistakes, we go back, and we quickly correct. Um, speaking is different than writing. We edit in real time, so we edit our speaking, right? So we feel, oh, I just yes. said something wrong, I just said the wrong word, or I wanted to use a better word, I wanted to use a better expression. Mm. So we go back and we correct it. You did that yes. very naturally. So you corrected very naturally and that got you points. So um, for instance, um, I asked you, can you tell me when your birthday is? And you said, yeah, my birthday is. And then you realized, hey, I got a good expression for that. My birthday falls on, falls mm-hmm. on. exactly. And so you corrected with that falls on or, or not even corrected, but you replaced with falls on. That was a great replacement. I'm going to give you points for that. As the examiner, that will allow me to increase your lexical resource mark from a six to an eight because it's a much better, more natural expression in the situation. So Mm -hmm. it was a great self-correction. So that was really good, Kavi, the falls on, okay? It's kind of you. No, well, it's not kind. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but it's not about kindness. It's just assessment of ability, right? Um, no, so kidding. those are those are all the positive points. Um, you had a co- so where you were losing some marks, you're probably thinking, well, where mm-hmm. did I lose one and a half bands so far in these mm-hmm. answers, right? You had a couple of grammatical mistakes, a couple of awkward pronunciation mistakes that you need to be careful about, like August. Um, months Agist. of the, yeah, you mm-hmm. said August, and I was like, August? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've never heard that one before. So it's August, right? Um, so ju- you know, you definitely don't want to mispronounce very common words mm-hmm. like months of the yes. year, for example. And then um, you had uh, just a couple of awkward grammatical mistakes that were less than what a band eight should be. Um, so, for example, you said last year my mom bakes. Uh, Baked, so yeah, um, yes, yes, I got it, yes. Yeah, yeah so uh, you can't make verb tense, simple verb tense mistakes at the band eight, band nine level. Okay, that's you yes. have to be very careful about that. A band mm-hmm. eight or a band nine candidate will not make a simple verb tense mistake, all right? Yeah, so, I have to pay attention at this, yes. Absolutely. So just mm-hmm. work on those, record yourself, catch those mistakes, correct those mistakes, mm-hmm. always get feedback, but you're definitely on mm-hmm. the right track. And I think with some good mm-hmm. focused study, lots of self-correction, mm-hmm. you should be able to climb mm-hmm. up to a band aid 8.5 pretty quickly. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you for uh, your tips. Calvi, just on a closing note, don't focus too much on vocabulary. Your vocabulary is fine now. Your fluency is fine. Focus on accuracy okay focus a lot of your attention on accuracy okay Mm -hmm. all right Kavi Mm -hmm. thank you so much for volunteering thank you for having me thank you Kavi Ah. Mm -hmm. thank you thank you very much very welcome have a great rest of your day bye Kavi okay bye all right that was Kavi Kavi's great yeah that was fantastic uh really good self corrections they're really good word replacements okay very nice thumbs up absolutely well done 
Learn from each other, students. These mistakes are very common. So if you're a band 775, you should be reflecting and thinking, hmm, am I making some of the same kinds of mistakes as Kaveh, um, or are my mistakes different? Uh, Fuad, one of our channel members. Fuad's being quite active. <laughs> Fuad says, I'm ready. Fuad, are you ready? I just gotta make sure. Sometimes internet connections come and go. Sometimes people come and go. They suddenly realize that they should be um, at work. <laughs> Fuad. Hello. Hi, Fuad. How are you? I am great. How are you? It's been great to be here. It's great I'm, to be here. I'm doing quite well. See, nice self-correction. That is so important. Ex excellent. Very good. Um, Thank you so much. Fuad, is this the second time that we're interacting? No, this is the first time. Last uh, week, actually, uh, my mic wasn't working. So I made sure that I'd fix it this week. I thought so. I thought this was my, I, I was like, I think this is the first time. Well, great. You're, uh, you've become a member of our channel, which is fantastic. You're watching lots of videos and you're uh, active in the uh, classes. I can see that. Uh, where are you, Fuad, in the world? Currently, I'm in Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh of India. And uh, I've just completed my graduation, so I'm just back home. Okay. Uh, simplify. I just graduated. I just graduated. Um, what did you graduate okay. in? Uh, I just completed my Bachelor's of Management Studies, majoring mm -hmm. in Finance and International Business. Awesome. Okay, so what are your plans for the future? My plan is to go to a, a country where I can, you know, pursue further my, maybe a postgraduate or proceed ahead further with any other specialization course. In business, right? It may be in business or finance. Mostly I'm more lean towards finance, mm -hmm. but let's see what, okay. which course I can, you know, get it. Yeah, I mean, the US is would be my top recommendation for your major um, in business and finance, simply because the world still mostly follows US finance and economics uh, policies and procedures. So that's why if you have the chance, I would choose uh, a, a good university in the US. What you learn there will likely be the most applicable um, to your future life. So um, it's changing, <laughs> but it's still the US. <laughs> it's still the US. Yeah, that's that's really a great suggestion and I'll really look into it. But for now, I'm looking at Canada, Ireland, Australia, and that is pretty much which I'm looking at right now. But as you said, I'll take US into consideration as well. Canada is a good second. Canada basically copies uh -huh. a lot of U.S. Uh, once you get a little <laughs> bit further away, it changes more. But uh, yeah, no, Canada is uh -huh. a good good option too for sure. All right, well, let's get into uh -huh. a couple of these uh, part one questions about your birthday. Are you ready? Sure. Let's dive right into it. <laughs> awesome. What did you do on your last birthday? I would say that on my last birthday, I spent the first half of my day with my friends going to a mall playing some sports and uh, the last of the last half of the day was with family where i went ahead with my family to a uh, restaurant and uh, just just you know completed a day with the buffet and some quality family time do you have any special birthday traditions in your family yes in fact uh, i would say that we sit together, we talk a little bit, we talk about our uh, childhood days when I was a child, when my sister, who's also like one year younger than me, she was a child. We talk about those times and my parents tell how stupid things we used to do, do, uh, do during that time. And uh, we, as, as traditions are considered, uh, we go to restaurant or maybe some nice place where we can sit and enjoy with the family and that is pretty much i would say what was your most memorable birthday now let me think about that so i would say that one of my most memorable birthday was when i got to spend the time with the most uh, favorite and cherished people in my life so 
basically i got to spend a lot of time with my friends my girlfriend and then the family as well so it was i think my 19th birthday when my day started and i went ahead with my friends we roamed around around the city a lot we went to playground we played a lot of football cricket and then during noon time i went ahead with my girlfriend we watched a movie together i think it was jumanji if i'm not wrong and it was really a great time matter of fact i gave her a ring in a pop go- popcorn box and she was really surprised it was a promise ring and uh, then later at the end of the day with the family i uh, we baked a cake together at home okay let's and, stop there uh, it let's was stop there yeah. all right careful not to over speak right because then you'll get interrupted i would have stopped with the uh with the uh really surprised the the popcorn box ring that was really cool um and then i think that's a good finish right there okay so careful okay. not to go over too much and this is a warning for everybody um you have mm-hmm. to limit yourself um again it's a bad advice that some people are saying on youtube or other places where they say just keep talking till the examiner stops you uh, don't mm-hmm. do that Fouad, because it makes for an awkward conversation and it also starts okay. to create some bad english as well because our brain starts to get confused we jumble our words so no you really have to mm-hmm. have like a clear answer give some explanation give maybe one example and then just mm-hmm. stop right and wait for that next question okay so, duly noted so so be careful about that don't don't go over the uh-huh. top okay um sure. you can kind of see it like if you're look when you're looking at the examiner you can almost see in their mm-hmm. eyes or in their body language when they've had enough mm-hmm. and you can almost <laughs> see them get kind of irritated when they're getting okay. just too much information so if you start to see them get kind of weird it means you're probably talking mm-hmm. too much so you need to kind of cut back a bit okay definitely all right um first of all your band score definitely about a seven to seven five all right so mm-hmm. you've got mm-hmm. some really nice features um to your language first of all it's clear that you have lots of experience with english you've got good vocabulary great mm-hmm. fluency um Thank you're you. answering the questions you've got good content as well uh-huh. you uh-huh. just need to clean it up a little bit let me give you a bit of feedback here on what I would change uh, for you to get a uh, higher score Um, Mm -hmm. so uh, I asked you what did you do on your last birthday and you said Mm -hmm. you said I would say that on my last birthday okay um, the I would Uh say is okay to use Mm -hmm. that maybe once or twice in the speaking interview but definitely Mm -hmm. don't overuse it I would say is um, uncertain. So when in English you use this expression like I would say that my favorite cake is probably cheesecake, it's telling Mm -hmm. the listener that I'm not 100% sure. It's like I if it's like the rest of this saying is if I had to, I would say that's the missing part of it is that if I had to, if I had to, I would say right but we got omit it. Got but it. we omit that so if mm-hmm. you sound uncertain even even though uh-huh. you might be certain it sounds like you're uncertain and if you're uncertain uh-huh. it becomes confusing for the listener so uh-huh. the question in the head of the listener is like so did you do that on your last birthday or are you making this <laughs> up right <laughs> um so you yeah. so you should just omit that um what you uh-huh. did later uh where you said let me think about that Um, here when I asked you what was your most memorable birthday and you said let me think about that that's a better way to kind of get yourself Uh some time and then you said I would say that so just take that out right you you, you use (laughs) the I would say that for every answer so um, Mm -hmm. so just start with the one so when you're practicing at home Mm -hmm. every time that you find yourself starting with I would say that just stop yourself and be like no what I mean to say is my most memorable mm-hmm. birthday was my 19th birthday that I spent with my friends and my girlfriend. It was very special because I had a very intimate moment with my girlfriend. We watched a movie uh-huh. in the evening and I gave her a promise ring. Uh, I surprised her by hiding it in a box of popcorn and then just stop there, right? And that's a band nine, okay? So it's very sure. confident and fluent. So that's mm-hmm. what you want to focus on. Um, Definitely. Do you want to try that? So kind of repeat what I said. It doesn't have to be the same, but I just want you to follow with the same confidence. So what was your most memorable birthday? 
uh let me think about that one of the most memorable birthday was the time when i got to spend a lot of time with my friends and my girlfriend it was the day it it was my 19th birthday with my friends i played and then in the evening i went ahead with my girlfriend watched a movie and the best part about it was when i gave her a ring in the surprise popcorn box and she was really surprised awesome okay much better that was so a bit of repetition there but just the confidence and the flow there it was at least a seven five moving towards an eight and i'm sure everybody who's watching right now is like oh yeah okay i get the difference between the clarity mm -hmm. and the confidence being so important in the response um mm -hmm. also pay attention to this uh so the i would say get rid of it the other one that you want to get rid of is i went ahead Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why is I went ahead. It has a little bit of a different meaning or different use in English. So it's mm -hmm. slightly mm -hmm. awkward in these situations. Um, let me give you okay. an example. Uh, a, it, I would use it in a sentence like this. I went ahead with the plan anyways um, because uh, I didn't have time to change. So I went ahead means that I pushed forward, like I did it even though there was, you know, like um, I went ahead with my plan to go to the beach even though it started raining, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's like I okay. even Noted. though, do, do you see how it's used? It's used a little bit differently, yes, right? Yes, so yes. careful Definitely, with yeah. that, right? Careful with how mm -hmm. you use that, okay? Um, sure. So those two tips and uh, definitely uh, lots of practice, okay, Fouad? Sure. Thank you for giving me the opportunity and it's really good to be here. Thank you, Fouad. Keep uh, coming back and we'll talk again soon, okay? Sure, sure, sure. I'll All be right. here. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> All right, great. Bye for now, Fouad. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, that was Fouad. Thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Aditya in the chat is saying like went ahead or go ahead. It's like decided to do even though. Yes exactly that's kind of the context that we use it in aditya yeah okay um let's uh let's see if we can reach out to uh janiel at the very very bottom here janiel's probably thinking i'll never get a chance janiel are you ready yeah so i don't want you to think oh just because i'm at the bottom of the list i'll never get a chance I'll scroll around. Hello. Hi, Janiel. How are you? I'm doing great today. That's fantastic. I can hear some music in the background. Are you in some uh, festive location? Um, actually, uh, it's my father behind, sitting behind me. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Uh, Janiel, where are you right now? Um, I'm in India, Gujarat. In Gujarat, Western. India. Okay, yes. well, nice to have you here, Janiel. And why are you taking the IELTS exam? Um, to complete my bachelor's in Australia. Awesome. Uh, what do you want to do for your bachelor's? Um, I have to do bachelor's of nursing in Australia. In okay. Indonesia. All right, nursing. Great. Okay, and I see you're a premium uh, course user, which is excellent. Are you using the website every day? Um, yes, regularly. Good, good, good. And now you're here practicing in the live class. That's a great way to make sure that you're improving for the test. Are you ready for a few questions? Yes, why, why not? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's talk about birthdays. Uh, is there a specific age in your culture that is considered especially significant or celebrated in a grand way? Um, in my uh, country, there's a culture that if a child is completed its first year, it's the greatest achievement and um, the first year is celebrated like a new year. <laughs> How have birthdays changed for you as you grew older? Um, birthdays have uh, just remained the same, the same uh, chocolate givings and uh, the same birthday parties with the cakes. Just um, the gifts have been changed. 
if you could ask for any gift for your next birthday, what would you ask for and why? Um, if I would ask something, if I would have given a chance, I would ask for uh, a gaming laptop. Why? Um, because uh, I love doing gaming and playing video games whenever I am free and it's uh, one of my leisure yeah. activities. You have to die. Okay. Uh, that is the end of part one. We will now go on to part two. Okay, Janil, I will give you a bit of feedback. So, um, band score wise, that is about a band 5.5 to 6. Okay, um, so modest to fluent English is what that would be considered as. I think you can get a 6, 6.5, no problem, but to do that, you have to be more fluent. Your answers are simply too short. Okay, following me? Okay. Yeah, so too short. You have to give an explanation, all right? You're giving me the basic minimum. You're just giving me the absolute minimum amount of information. Like you're just giving me the answer and then you're stopping. Even when I ask you for more, like in this last question, I said, if you could ask for any gift for your next birthday, what would you ask for and why? I literally, I included that why question, right? Get that man some water. Is he okay? Yes. Okay, all right. Give, give him a glass of water. Make sure he's not choking. All right. Okay, so, so Janiel, you have to answer that why question, okay? Um, so you said, okay. if I could ask for anything, I would ask for a gaming laptop. Okay, fine. What kind of a gaming laptop is it? Is it a Dell? Is it an Apple? What kind of a laptop is it? And why would you ask for it? And I asked you why, and then you're like, oh, okay, it's because I love gaming. What's your favorite game? Call of Duty. So, you know, include a bit more information, and you're definitely going to get a better band score. Let me ask you this question one more time and just answer it more fluently include a bit more information okay ready okay all right yes. if you could ask for any gift for your next birthday what would you ask for and why um, if I'm given a chance to ask for something I'll definitely choose a gaming laptop uh, which would be definitely of uh, Dell um, and a mixture of Asus because uh, it's making a great graphic cards like RTX 30 and I would play the games such as Call of Duty and World of Tanks which are one of my favorite games uh, that I used to play in my leisure time. Perfect, okay, stop there and that would be a band 7, 7.5 right there, okay? So that's the big difference between a 5.5 <laughs> and a 7.5 way more detail way more clarity more specific so that's what you want to do and even be specific about your birthday if I, I could ask for anything for my 18th birthday okay. okay and I think it was a great question because it sounds like your parents are there so you're, they're listening to your birthday wish and you never know <laughs> maybe they'll get you your birthday wish right <laughs> Hopefully. Might be possible. <laughs> Might be. We're, we're indirectly. Message. Hint, hint, Dad. Uh, all right, Janiel, uh Practice hard, and I'm sure your parents will reward you uh, with maybe that birthday wish. Thank you so much for volunteering and for being a premium student. Thank you to you, sir. Okay. Have a great day and come back again, Janiel. Okay, sir. Bye. Bye for now. All right, that was Janil. Give Janil a thumbs up and uh, wish good health to whoever was coughing back there. Woo, that was sounding pretty bad. Hopefully they're doing all right. Okay, Fuang, I know last week was a hectic one um, and you're saying all works well for you. Now, Fuang is a regular student, very studious. Fuang, are you ready? Didn't have a chance last week. She was having some technical issues on her end, so let's give her a chance this week. All right, Fuang. <coughs> Fuang, I hear that you picked up again, but I still don't hear you. Fuang, I really recommend um, using a VPN and trying to route through someplace like Germany, maybe, or Japan. 
with the VPN, as you can hear, Fuang, the connection on my end is solid. I can hear, you know, multiple volunteers here. So it has to be something that's changed on your end because you were always able to connect in the past. Okay. So you have to check it out, Fuang. All right. Um, Nargiza, are you ready? Don't, and don't give up, Fuang, okay? Just keep at it. I'm sure the solution is there. You just have to figure it out. You have to figure out what's going on, how it's going. Talk to maybe a friend or somebody who's a bit tech savvy around you. And Aditya, I did see your request as well. So I've got my eye out for you. Hello. Hi, Nargiza. How are you? Nargiza, use the audio from the website, not YouTube. Yeah, I did. Okay, Hello? perfect. Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing, Nargiza? Um, I'm actually her brother. Oh, you're not. Nar <laughs> you guys are yeah. sharing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's just my exam tomorrow, and I just asked her to use. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That's a good ask. Yeah, good, good, uh, good sister. Um, <laughs> help you out um, all right well first of all good luck on your exam tomorrow Nargiza um, after you. you finish the exam come back and share people love love it when you know somebody comes back and then shares their experience gives them a little bit of a hint of what kind of questions are being asked on the exam so people really love that so definitely come back okay Nargiza for sure and share actually I have been a big fan of yours oh and sorry I should say what is your name because you're not obviously you're not Nargiza so what what is your name uh, you can call me Vadim. Vadim? Vadim, yes. Okay, all right. Can you spell that for me? V-A-D-I-M. Vadim. Okay, got it. It's the M that I didn't hear there. Vadim. Yeah. Okay, got it, Vadim. Well, thank you, Vadim. I'm flattered. That's very kind of you. Okay, Vadim. Well, let's get you a little bit prepped up for the exam tomorrow. Is it your speaking tomorrow or is it the whole exam? Yeah, speaking, listening, it is and speaking everything? tomorrow. It's speaking tomorrow. Okay, and then mm -hmm. the listening, reading, writing, is it after that? The day, yeah, the day after that. That's nice. It's nice to have it separated like that for sure. Okay. Um, all right, Vadim. Well, let's do this. Uh, let's jump in. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. May I see your identification? Yes, sure. Here's my passport that I used for registration. Please have a look. Thank you. What is your full name? My given name is Vadim and my surname is uh, Kirillov, but you can call me by my first name. Okay, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you like to do at the weekends? Well, usually at weekends, I try to unwind a bit just because uh, during the weekdays, I really work hard and I just let myself to uh, watch some movies and go outside to do some outdoor activities like jogging. Like last Sunday, I was uh, outside on the stadium and I spent about two hours. Uh, let's talk about your birthday. Can you tell me when your birthday is? Yeah, I was born in uh, 23rd of August. It was Sunday and 1998. Do you have any special birthday traditions in your family? Usually, when it's birthday of uh, uh, one individuals in our family, uh, we try to uh, make a surprise from the beginning. I mean, in the mo from the morning, we uh, just gather around uh, around the person and uh, just like you said, uh, happy birthday to you. We just sing to her or her. If you could ask for anything for your next birthday, what would you ask for and why? Well, given the chance to ask from my parents, let's say, I would ask for a car just because I'm usually having uh, troubles with transportation. And uh, if it would be possible, I would just ask for the, for the car. Okay, I'm going to stop there. 
um, and give yeah. you some feedback. So uh, first of all, very good. I can tell that you know you're you're paying attention to lessons. Hopefully you're using the premium course. Um, it's totally okay to share within your household. So if Nargiza has the premium access and you're using the course as well, uh, that's absolutely a good idea. You know, share, why not? There's no problem with that. And um, and you're picking up the tips and the, and the lesson, uh, which is nice. You're giving full sentence answers. You have a strong start. So that was really good. You said, yes, gladly, here's my passport. Please take a look at it. I used it for registration. Uh, please call me by my first name. Uh, so that was really well executed, okay? Uh, make sure to mm -hmm. continue with the same level of fluency and precision from the very mm -hmm. start of the exam all the way till the very end, okay? So till the very last question of part three. That's my biggest tip for you. The reason why yeah. I say that is because your answers got a little bit weaker um, as we mm -hmm. progressed and I don't think they need to I think you have the English to just you know do really well I definitely think you're somewhere between the seven to eight range so I wouldn't be surprised if you got a band 7.5 even an 8 even an 8.5 uh, on your test depending on how you do on the rest of it okay part two part three yes um, I, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yep I also think that like uh, my vocabulary is like the kind of uh, student who is uh, non-native student, I mean, who is studying in universities like in America. But it, it comes to my, I, I think my confidence and experience is not having uh, like uh, talking with other, other people. It's just like uh, social barriers, I think. That's a good self-recognition, um, I would say. Uh, let me just give you a specific point here, and then you, you can carry this into your exam tomorrow and yeah. think about this when, you're, when you have these questions. So this question here, if you could ask for any gift, you said, well, given the chance to ask from my parents for sake, because that's usually who we ask from when we're growing up, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so that was good. You said, I would ask for a car um, because I'm having some troubles going getting around town um so you gave me a little bit of an explanation there and then after that you simply just reiterated so you said so if it would be possible i would ask for a car um instead of that reiteration uh give me some details like um really visualize what you're going to say so what kind of a car would you ask for oh yeah yeah what has a you, point <laughs> what would you ask like, for serious that's a that's a question what would you ask for what kind of a car would you ask for well, just reasonable car, I guess. Uh, it's typical we have that we have in our country. Be specific. Like, give me, give me a car. Nexia. I would call for. I would just ask for Nexia. Okay, brand new one, two years old, 2015, 2018, red, blue. Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen. All right. Why? <laughs> Good. Yeah, I got okay. your point with more details. I got it. You got that point, right? So I'm yeah, going to ask yeah. you this question one more time. Give me those details. Mm -hmm. Don't go overboard. Give me the reason why, okay? Um, if yeah. you could ask for any gift for your next birthday, what would you ask for and why? Oh, given the chance, I would ask for my parents uh, to just give me a car, gift me a car, just because I'm having lots of troubles uh, when it comes to transportation. Uh, when it uh, usually when it's uh, heavy rain outside, and I don't li like like buses, but I would ask for a typical car which is in my uh, best type. Uh, it would be Nexia with uh, my favorite color purple, and uh, the is the cost will be, will not be so much uh, expensive. It will be reasonable. Okay, good. Stop there. Yeah. <laughs> so don't go overboard, right? I would have probably just stopped yeah. that purple with my favorite color purple. Okay, and then just stop mm -hmm. there, right? So know that yeah. limit, right? You have to you have to find that balance. So you've got 24 hours before you're roughly, maybe a little bit less. Um, mm -hmm. So practice, um, I think you'll do really well on the simpler questions at the beginning. So practice some of those uh, more challenging part three questions and really practice giving details, but not too many details where you're making mistakes, right? And then just stop. Yeah. And then I think you can get into that seven, five to eight range, okay? Yeah. Thank All right. You. Thank you for volunteering. It was really good to meet you and uh, say hi to Nargiza as well for us. Sure. Thank you, <laughs> okay. Mr. Adrian. All right. Good luck on your test, uh, Vladim, tomorrow. Bye for now. Hi. All right. Let's give him a good luck thumbs up. Big good luck thumbs up, everybody. All right. Okay. All right. Um, let's
let's take one more. I know we're a little bit over time today, but uh, Aditya was just giving everything he had today. So Aditya, are you ready? We'll give you a quick shot at a couple of questions, okay? Um, and uh, Vadim, yes, Vadim, thank you, stranger, uh, for that correction. Yes, Vadim, good luck tomorrow uh, on that test, okay? Let us know how it went. Let us know what kind of questions you got. Ooh. All right, Aditya. Hello. Hi, Aditya. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well. You hung in there and you were really giving it a lot of effort today. So I was like, okay. Exam on fourth. We're, so let's see. <laughs> we're out of time, Aditya, but I'm going to give you a few questions anyway. Are you ready? I appreciate that. Yes, I am ready. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let's talk about birthdays. How have birthdays changed for you as you grew older? Yeah, I think uh, I remember my sixth birthday. Uh, it was quite a uh, simple affair it was just like few friends from my school and that's about it we just didn't even have a cake back then but nowadays it's all about big fanfare everybody would come to your place you would celebrate you would have we, i would have a cake uh, cut and then we'd go, we'll go to some nice restaurant yeah it has changed quite a bit i would say if you could ask for any gift for your next birthday what would you ask for and why I think I'll ask for uh, Apple Watch. I'm eyeing it for quite some time now because I'm a uh, uh, fitness enthusiast. It will help me to track my fitness goals and uh, it it will be a good add-on to my collection. Okay. I'm going to stop there and give you some beat feedback. Okay, so first, that last answer was like a band nine. That was really good. Um, the first answer was about a band 8.5-ish, uh, but also very good. Um, really nice English. Aditya, you've been practicing. Uh, good for you. Nice yeah. application of uh, expressions. So you said, yeah, I think I remember my sixth birthday. It was a simple affair. Very nice English. It was a simple affair, meaning that it was a... Not a complicated situation. It was kind of every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, we didn't even have cake. Did you make that up? No, no, no. We, we really didn't have cake back then. Oh, you didn't? We really didn't have cake. Okay. No, no, no. No such fancy things. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start. We would, we would make some sweet and that we would celebrate with that. We In India, I think it is quite new. The cake thing is quite new, okay. except the cities possibly. I'm going to start like a new charity. It's going to be called A Cake for Every Child. That's going to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not like we, uh, we didn't have anything. The cake was quite new to us. Basically. I know, Aditya. That's not what I meant either. <laughs> I, just, I just want every child to have a cake on their birthday. <laughs> so, all right. Um, what I really liked about your answer is that you realized at the end that it's really important to use the grammar of the question. And a couple volunteers recognize that this question is present perfect, have changed, right? So for those of you who are new to the IELTS, you have to really pay attention to that, have changed. And you said it has changed quite a bit, I would say. So uh, that was a good little trick to kind of say, oh, I do recognize or I did recognize that this is present perfect and here you go. Here's the present mm -hmm. perfect. It has changed quite a bit, I would say. So that was really clever of you to kind of throw that in at the end as a closing sentence. Very smart. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This was a good condition. So I would ask for an Apple Watch. I've been eyeing it for some time now. Have you really? Have you been eyeing <laughs> the Apple Watch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I am eyeing, I not not me, but uh, my wife is eyeing it for quite some time. So I just have I just made it up. <laughs> Good for you. That's a very smart. So you took what your wife is doing and then you adapted yeah. it to yourself. So we now know that you need to buy your wife an Apple Watch, right? Yeah, <laughs> soon, soon, very soon. Okay, well we won't we won't tell her. So make sure it's a surprise. No, uh, she's well aware. She's already uh, telling okay. me you have to buy it. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, no, no choice. All right, um, but very nice expression. Eyeing, yeah. eyeing it. Eyeing in as a verb is very interesting in English, uh, and Aditya okay. is teaching everybody this verb here, which is very good. When you're eyeing something, it means that you're looking at it and you're very interested in it. Yeah. Uh, you don't actually have to be looking at it almost even. It just means that you're really interested in that. So okay. that was a very, very good use of natural uh, language. I'm a fitness enthusiast. Fitness enthusiast was a really nice collocation. So uh, some strong English there for sure. 
Aditya, I think if you keep that up and um, avoid mistakes, you can get a band nine on your Wish me luck. Sure. I have exam on 4th September. Ooh, 4th of September. That's going to be a <laughs> Monday, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it's Labor Day for us. Uh, well, good luck on that test. You've yes, got a couple right. more classes, so make sure to come back and volunteer. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll join. I'll join all of them. Okay, cool. I will keep an eye out thank for you, you. Aditya. Thank yes, you for thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Bye, Aditya. Yeah. Same to you. Thank you for accommodating. Thank you. All right. That was Aditya. Big thumbs up for Aditya. Everybody, we went over. I was having so much fun with this topic, birthdays. So we went a little bit over the usual time. Usually these classes are 90 minutes. But students, that mean that doesn't mean you can't you know, keep learning, keep studying. Carolina, thank you so much for joining in. Um, I'm not sure if you're still here, but uh, I did see you join there. I just didn't... Um, reflect and I appreciate you uh, helping people out and Ahita kind of joined in later as well so that was really great everybody um, for lots more IELTS stay in there uh, join the premium version by clicking this big uh, red button it's a one-time payment for lifetime access uh, we're an IDP affiliate British Council partner IELTS test registration center you're all amazing beautiful people and for those of you who are sitting IELTS exams in the next few days the best of luck for those of you celebrating birthdays in the next few days happy birthday um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day i will be back tomorrow with uh task one writing for uh channel members and um we'll have uh listening parts three and four finishing that exam that we started last week uh for subscribers so make sure to subscribe to the channel and of course uh check out um, aehelp.com gltshelp.com join those courses join the premium members become a part of the community and begin learning great English for IELTS and for the rest of your life. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye.